Hey everybody, I'm Jack Reedy with Future Pastimes. I'm one of the designers on the expansions for the 2019 edition of the Classic Dune board game published by Gale Force 9. And I've had some people ask me about the design process on the expansions, in particular the first one, and whether or not we uh, used the original Avalon Hill takes on the Ixian Jihad, the Lance Rad Maneuver, and their version of Tleilaxu uh, as part of that design process. So to give you a little bit of background, uh, Avalon Hill had their own magazine called The General, where they could put out articles, reviews, and supplements and expansions to their various war games and other board games. And in the times of when they still had that Dune license, they put out a few of their own expansions to Dune uh, in The General. Uh, for players to take advantage of. And these were, I guess, considered semi-official expansions. They were part of Avalon Hill's publication empire. Um, they did not involve the original designers of Dune. In fact, they didn't really even know about it and uh, certainly weren't um, asked to consult or opine on any of the ideas there. And um, so... When it came time for us to start working on an expansion for Dune uh, with the new 2019 Gale Force 9 uh, edition, uh, part of our the, the licensing and the contract for the publication of Dune was to start doing new expansions. And there's really you're kind of a couple of decades worth of time where there could and should have been expansions to Dune. Now, the original designers did put out two expansions to Dune uh, leading up to the release of the Lynch movie. And those expansions were The Duel and Spice Harvest. And they did not introduce any new factions. It just kind of stayed in with uh, the existing ones and supplemented them. Uh, the Duel was a way for you to add in uh, the head of each faction as a leader disc and, uh, and then a way for leaders to uh, fight out a mini Canley duel at uh, some point in the middle of the game. So it was a, not quite a standalone game. It was his own experience. It was meant to be part of Dune, whereas Spice Harvest was a pregame, uh, and it was a kind of a standalone game, although it was intended to be uh, a prelude to setting up Dune and it would be an alternate start to that game. Um, so that was designed by the original designers of Dune, uh, Bill Eberly, Jack Kittredge, and Peter Alaka. The stuff in the general, um, it, was, it was some new factions, and it was uh, a way for you to have um, up to nine players, which is an interesting thing. And I've played with those factions, uh, but I didn't think they were particularly good. And that, that's certainly my opinion. Uh, I know that there's some people who didn't have as big an issue with them. But their Tleilaxu faction was not really a playable faction. It didn't have any forces or leaders. You had this strange system where you would have a hand of treachery cards, and after the battle phase, you could attack a leader and try to kill them, but they might be able to have a defense. Um, and then if you were uh, somebody was was taking stuff out of the out of the Tleilaxu tanks. Um, you could use them to control territory, but you had to keep track of that. It was very strange. I didn't think that it made a lot of sense. It was uh, very difficult to manage. Some of the rules were not very clear. Um, so we didn't even look at that when we were uh, sitting down to um, work on that Ixians and Tleilaxu expansion. Um, I, I was a big advocate for saying we needed some new factions and and. By the time we were working on that, there was now uh, an additional wealth of books from the Ryan Herbert, Kevin J. Anderson line of stories, and a lot of which um, are pretty close to that that time frame of when Dune takes place or leading right up to it. Um, the, uh, the General's take on the Ixians um, was also, I thought, uh, sort of a, it was like a draft uh, of a design, in my opinion. I felt like it needed to be play tested and workshopped a little bit more. Um, there were certainly some interesting ideas in there, uh, but again, it was just um, just not interesting. One of the things I thought was funny was they had this. They referred to this 
uh, idea that the Ixians and the Tililaxu were uh, notorious partners in crime, which is definitely not the case. Uh, even before the Brian Herbert books, um, there was plenty of evidence that um, indicated they were uh, rivals, if nothing else. And, um, and then the extended lore really uh, shows that they hated each other. They were, they were huge rivals. And, um, and it's actually a fairly interesting story about the Tlilaxu uh, attempt to take over Ix. And um, there's, some, there's some good stuff in there. So that's what we drew upon. And we were letting the, um, the Dune lore drive what was going to be part of that decision. And there have been some other homebrew takes on an Ixian faction and a Tlilaxu faction. And uh, while I was familiar with that, um, the other designers didn't really look at it at all. And so uh, we just started thinking about what would be interesting things for those factions to do. Um, but we did start off with what did we know about the factions and what were some common threads uh, from the lore, and that drove the design decisions uh, by and large for that. Um, as far as the Lance Rad, I think that you could definitely have a Lance Rad faction, and I've got some ideas about that that I'm hoping to work on and get uh, together. I didn't really like the take from the general uh, because it was more about preventing players from doing things. You could do these things where you could have them hold an action where they couldn't revive and they couldn't ship or they couldn't have battles. And I felt that that was, uh, it was too much about taking agency away from the players and really not um, adding anything to it. Um, so I think that um, some of the other stuff where they're talking about leveraging the influence of the Lance Rat, I think is, is a good place to start from. So it wasn't all uh, bad ideas. Um, and again, it's subjective. So that was just my take on it. Um, a lot of what I brought to Dune comes from having worked on Cosmic Encounter. And again, one of the big things that we we learned from designing with Cosmic Encounter was we wanted to make sure that players have agency, they're able to make uh, interesting choices. And, um, and, and just the fact, you know, Cosmic Encounter is this rich history of so many different aliens, each with its own uh, advantage that it can do. So we really like that idea of having um, more factions in the game. And I think um, one of the things that we wanted to do was to revisit Spice Harvest, uh, but I felt like, why don't we push that off until we have explored factions as an idea, and then we can uh, let Spice Harvest take advantage of all the existing factions. So that's kind of the the, the thought process behind that. And that's why the second expansion was Chome and Riches. In our research on the Ixians and Tlilaxu, there was a lot of interesting Riches lore. Um, and they're, they're hinted at in, um, in the first book, and they're mentioned in the glossary. Um, but the extended uh, universe novels really draw out the, uh, the storylines and give that faction, uh, House Riches, some depth to it that I, that I found interesting, and that's what we leveraged for that. And of course, Chome has been ubiquitous through all of the uh, uh, early books, and the latest trilogy that uh, that Brian and Kevin had put out um, has a really big Chome subplot. In fact, I think it's the most interesting subplot of those three books. And um, the Chome, you get a lot more insight into Chome, who's running Chome, what what their objectives are. So that drove into it. And I'll get a little more into that in a separate Chome Rich S video. But here. It was about um, not really delving into the stuff from the general uh, or the homebrew things. Um, the original designers, they were like, we don't want to see any of that. We want to know about any of that. Um, for me, I, I, I'm of the school of thought of let's let the best idea get uh, into the printers and get that out. And uh, so we definitely, I, I felt it was good to look at stuff to see if there was a, a way to influence it. Uh, you know, the the need to have face dancers uh, was a common denominator with a lot of the homebrews. Um, I like the, the take that we did on it because it let us use the existing trader deck uh, and it adds that tension in there. I know that a lot of people, when they first saw what face dancers were and how they didn't even have to be in the battle in order to trigger them, they're like, oh, you know, the Tilaxu is just going to win the game without having to do anything. 
that really just really doesn't happen. Um, it, it doesn't fire that often, even if you're able to recycle uh, your face dancers and get uh, potentially a better one. It's a, it's a gamble. So you, uh, you're gambling on a lot in order to try to win the game passively as to Tleilaxu. They just are not going to win unless they actively get into uh, the thick of it at some point. So those are, so those are my thoughts. A uh, little bit of insight into the design process for that expansion in terms of the general. Um, I think there, there's some PDFs out there for people who want to look at it. I think Board Game Geek has some breakdowns of, of those so that you can judge for yourself what do you think about it. If you've played with those factions, let me know your thoughts on them. Um, were you surprised? Were you disappointed that uh, the expansions that were published uh, didn't bear a closer resemblance to those original Avalon Hill? Uh, or were you, like me, delighted that they had no resemblance to them uh, at all? Uh, or did you fall somewhere in between? Let me know in the comments uh, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.